Good morning. I'm Dr. Sanjay Razdan from the International Robotic Institute for Prostate Cancer in Miami, Florida. Welcome to our educational series on prostate cancer. What is prostate cancer? Prostate cancer is the most commonly diagnosed cancer and the second leading cause of cancer death in men in the United States after lung cancer. Almost 300,000 people will be diagnosed with prostate cancer in the U.S. alone in 2024. Of these men, nearly 35,000 men will die. Scary numbers for sure. Now, there are different society guidelines on prostate cancer screening. Prostate cancer screening does lower mortality. The goals of cancer screening are to detect potentially lethal cancer at an early stage, to intervene with curative intent, and thereby lower the burden of overall treatment. According to the American Neurological Association and the Society of Urologic Oncology, clinicians should engage in what's called shared decision-making with people with prostate cancer and people who are undergoing prostate cancer screening and talk to them about when and how and where should they start prostate cancer screening. This should be based on the person's values and preferences. PSA screening in men under age 40 years is generally not recommended with the proviso that you don't have a very strong genetic background or have other clinical indicators pointing towards a genetically uh, uh, originating prostate cancer. PSA screening may begin with a baseline PSA at about 45 or 50 years of age. Now, PSA screening should be offered, should be offered beginning at age 40 in men at increased risk of developing prostate cancer based on, number one, black ancestry, germline mutations, a strong family history of prostate cancer. So if your father, your brother, your uncle, or your grandfather had prostate cancer, there's a higher probability that you may develop prostate cancer, and screening is generally recommended at 40. Clinicians should offer regular prostate screening every couple of years to men between 50 and 69 years of age. Now, MRI of the prostate has come a long way in screening of patients with prostate cancer. It's become almost ubiquitous nowadays, just like MRIs in breast cancer. There is a grading and a scoring system which has been created called the PIRAT system. This tells us whether the cancer is, or if the patient does have cancer, whether it is clinically significant or it's insignificant, or the probability of a patient's lesion on an MRI being cancer, with PIRATS 1 being the lowest probability of there being cancer, to a PIRATS 5 being the highest probability of having prostate cancer. Our group here at the International Robotic Institute for Prostate Cancer was instrumental in finding that PIRATS 5 lesions and MRI, along with certain clinical factors, including the PSA velocity, as well as the digital rectal examination, carries a much higher risk of clinically significant prostate cancer. And these patients may actually forego prostate biopsy and go straight to surgery. Circumventing a prostate biopsy is that an option? Sure it is, because the prostate biopsies in itself carry an inherent risk. Vasovagal responses in one to 2%, bleeding, hematuria or blood in the urine in almost 50%, and almost 50% of patients having blood in the semen, which will last for a couple of months. In addition, of course, to the pain, the anxiety, as well as erectile dysfunction in a small percentage of patients. Serious infections requiring hospitalization may occur, after a prostate biopsy. And it's imperative for the patient to know this and for the clinician to discuss these side effects. Now, MRI can be used to help target suspicious lesions during prostate biopsy. A biopsy can be done on the local anesthetic of the office or with light sedation in a surgical suite. Talking about urosepsis after a prostate biopsy, we previously published that performing transrectal cleansing with povidone ID in rectal preps lowers the incidence of infection rates. At this point, we are happy to report in 2024 that our technique of judicious use of antibiotics, along with meticulous povidone iodine rectal preps prior to a prostate biopsy, have lowered the incidence and we have had a 0% infection rate following a prostate biopsy. This should again be discussed with your clinician prior to a biopsy. Once diagnosed with prostate cancer and biopsy, men are classified into different risk categories very low risk, low risk, intermediate, high, and very high risk. Factors such as the PSA, the PSA velocity, the free PSA, the Gleason grade group, and of course the clinical stage contribute to these risk factors. 
depending on the patient's risk category, different treatment options are available. Active cell is the one, with just monitoring the PSA and repeating prostate biopsies at regular intervals as needed. Radiation, focal therapy, and of course, surgical extubation. Check out our next video on robotic surgery, where we will be discussing the surgical treatment option of prostate cancer. Thank you.